Hello everyone, I'd like to welcome you to Global Traveler, your number one resource hub for anything travel, visa, immigration related. Now in today's video, I'd like to talk about the three biggest secrets to a successful visa application. If you're thinking of making a visa application, you're thinking about traveling uh, for whatever purpose your travel is for. Um, if you've attempted applying for a visa in the past, and you haven't been successful um, this video is for you now why am i sharing this information and who am i well i have had the opportunity of putting in quite a number of um, visa applications over the years um, i started my first travel was in 2014 and since then i have put in quite a number of uh, visa applications for myself and uh a couple of other individuals who have you know guided to uh, put in their visa applications and i've studied for years i've studied the systems the application systems of uh, several embassies and these are uh, visa applications uh with these visa application offices and their requirements uh for a very long time and so I have, you know, sort of found out what exactly they are looking for um, in a visa application. And then this has helped me um, to sort of get ahead in terms of um, applying for a visa each and every time. Um, and so um, I've discovered some secrets, some core requirements, some um, very important factors that they usually tend to look out for. And a lot of people do not know this and so they blindly put in their uh, their visa applications and a lot of people get denied so um if you want to avoid getting denied a visa application uh, you want to be successful with your visa application then you need to listen uh, closely to the information that i'm about to share with you and be sure to uh, watch this video all the way to the end now countries like the united kingdom and the schengen you know australia and canada for these countries um, you just have to put in your application they will review your application and then they will decide whether they are going to give you the visa or not but for um, country like united states um, you have to appear in front of them and then they will have to interview you ask you a couple of questions uh, before the visa is either granted you or denied one of the first things that visa applications officers look out for is travel experience yeah i know it may sound crazy but one of the criteria they look out for is travel experience and maybe this may be your first time this may be your first attempt you may be thinking that how am i going to ever prove uh, travel experience when probably this is your first time of travel um, i'm going to go into that the second thing that they look out for is your financial situation and then they thing they look out for is your binding ties now i'm going to go into these points um, in detail now when it comes to travel experience usually they are looking uh, for credibility they want to know if you've you know you move about you are fluid you have the reputation of you know traveling and returning to your home country a lot of i mean the main reason why a lot of people are denied a visa is that this visa application officers fear that when they give you the visa usually visit visas let me put it that way that people um, will overstay their visas they will not come back to their home countries and so on so on and so forth we know the story and so if it is your first time you're traveling or you're thinking about traveling and uh, you are lacking travel experience Personally, my suggestion, if you're from Africa, one of my suggestions is that look out for countries um, that are very generous when it comes to issuing out visas. Look out for countries where it is very, very easy to get a visa, even if it is within the African sub-region. So even if you are from Ghana or from Nigeria, try and move or travel or try and get a visa to other African countries, you know, outside of your region. So if you are like I'm saying, from Ghana, Nigeria, move out of the ECOWAS region, try applying for a Kenyan visa or a South African visa or Madagascar visa or um, or even um, a Dubai visa, visa to the United Arab Emirates. Look out for a country that is more easy to get um, a visa and try and get one of these visas into your passports um, before you attempt to apply to maybe the United Kingdom or to the United States. 
this is just to show that like i'm saying you move you are somebody who moves and comes back to their home country and so once they give you or they issue you that um visa you will come back to your home country because like i'm saying that is their uh, number one priority to avoid uh, people who collect visit visas and then um, they never return to their home country so if you can then you must uh, try and get this done and look for countries that are easy to get and then you know put in uh, try applying for these countries first of first and foremost before you look at any of these western countries now if that you are not able to do that well we can go on and then look at the other two factors right. now the second big secret that visa application officers look at is um, your financial credibility or your financial statement and so this is one area that a lot of people get wrong um, now this is very particular or peculiar to countries like the united kingdom australia and canada once you put in your visa application usually you are required to submit um, a proof of funds your bank statement as part of your application now the reason why they do this is number one to assess that you are somebody who is capable of funding your trip now if you are not capable of funding your trip then it is obvious that your visa is going to be denied now how do they assess and know if you are somebody who is capable of funding your trip so just looking at your bank statements there are some key things that they are going to look out for uh, number one if it's you are employed and you are receiving a salary so usually they look out for three months bank statements so over the three months period sometimes even more they try to assess and see if you are receiving um, payments from your company whether you are employed and then um, you are receiving salaries the other assessment that a lot of people also do not know is that based on this information if you are receiving a salary or in, in your visa applications most especially with the united kingdom they go on to ask you a series of questions to determine if the funds that you are receiving as a salary is able to cater for um, your travel and so they ask you are you married do you have responsibility for family how much do you spend on your family every, every month um, how much do you spend on your dependents how much do you spend on your cost of living and then they go on to your travel how much your travel is going to cost you how much you are going to pay for your travel um, how much is your air ticket your place of accommodation and so on and so forth and so with this series of questioning they are trying to mathematically gauge if your source of income your savings if you have any they are going to ask you that by the way that if this is able to sustain um, the cost of your trip so for instance you state on your visa application that you're going to you are traveling to the uk you're going to be here for say two weeks so they ask you how much that trip is going to cost you and based on that they make an assessment of the funds that is in your account they try to see how long you've been saving how much you have in your bank account and if that amount will be able to cover for the trip uh sometimes people say yes i have money in my bank account i have um the stated funds in my account but yes still um i was denied so sometimes you have to know that one way they look at it is how much have you saved um over the period and uh, how much the trip is going to cost you so if they realize that the trip is going to take up the entire amount you've saved over the period then um it's a red flag for them because then they are thinking why would you want to spend your entire life savings or all the savings that you have on just a single trip and then there is where the red flag comes about and so um you have to take that into consideration and also one of the things that you have to be mindful of is that huge lump or lump deposits or huge amounts that sadly flood into your account so if they will see an amount which just came into your bank account uh, just like that out of the blue um, just to be presented for a visa application that is a red flag for them because they know that you put it there specifically for your visa application 
So now how will you go or how should you go about presenting your bank statement? Obviously you should have funds for the travel and the way I analyze this or look at it is that your, the funds that you should have in your bank account should be able to cover for your trip, uh, the entire cost of your trip and be in excess. If you are presenting such a statement, then you shouldn't present a statement which has a lump sum, you know, which just came into your account. So your opening balance should have an amount like I'm saying, that can cover for your trip um, and even have excess left, you know, even after the cost of your trip is taken out. So your opening balance that you present as, you know, a bank statement should have that amount and then your account should flow seamlessly with regular transactions, uh, normal everyday transactions with, you know, if it is your salaried account, you should see your salary coming in, expenses going in, going out, um, of, out of your bank account. Generally, um, this is the idea. This is how um, it ought to be presented. Otherwise, you are looking at the possibility of your visa application being rejected based on um, insufficient funds or not the uh, officer not being convinced about your ability to uh, sponsor your trip. The third most important point or the third biggest secret to a very successful visa application is um, your binding ties. So binding ties are essentially things that tie you back to your home country. So just to backtrack the point that, you know, these visa application officers, they are looking at things that will bring you back to your home country because if you're visiting, you're just visiting, they don't want you to get stuck in their country or get stuck in their system. You know, if you don't have binding ties, then it leads to um, a very strong grounds for rejection. Now, what are examples of binding ties? One of the things they look out for is if you are married and if you have kids. Uh, so that is a great binding tie. So they assess and see that, yes, you you are not likely to want to leave your wife and kids and never come back. And so. Um, that is a great binding tie. Another binding tie is if you are employed. Are you employed? How long have you been in your position? You are taking break off work to travel and then you will come back. Your job needs you and you will come back to your job. Um, another binding tie is if you have a business, you're a business owner, you own a company. Um, that is another great binding tie. So um, in summary, these are the three biggest of course, they look at other factors, um, where you're going to stay, who you're going to visit, what you're going to do, um, how long you will be in there for and so on and so forth. But really, from my experience, from the past, you know, almost 10 years that I've uh, been doing this, these are the core biggest things that they look at, the three biggest secrets, things that they really look at. Now, let me specifically zoom in into um, the United States. They sort of interview you for your visa as much as possible. Most of the time, they hardly look at the papers that you've brought, the documents that you've brought. And so it's a reason a lot of people go for a U.S. visa application and, and interview and they say they didn't even bother looking at my documents. Yes. So these officers are trained to, you know, engage you and they believe that psychologically they need to engage you psychologically and then the papers doesn't matter the papers tell a different story people can forge things so they really need to um, engage you and to try and get the truth out of you and so um, they try to ask you questions pertaining to your travel and also their line of questioning also revolves around um, these three key points that I've just outlined. So yes, I'd like to um, end this video here. It's getting a big, a bit lengthy. If you have any questions whatsoever, please uh, drop them in the comment section below. I have purpose to make a lot of content to answer a lot of questions when it comes to visa application and travel on this channel. And so if you found this content useful, if you, if you found this information that I've shared useful, uh, just kindly subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so that each time I upload a new video, you will be uh, notified. Thank you for your time. More videos coming up. Peace. Bye-bye.